What's up, everybody? It's been a couple of weeks. My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com, and today I'm gonna finish a video that I've been trying to sort of make for probably about a month now. I actually shot some video of unboxing some stuff here, and and I'm gonna show you that in this video. And I'm just like been so heavily into doing programming for my little app that I just sort of lost track of time, and I haven't sat down and edited because getting this working is like it's fun and I just decided not to edit so anyway welcome to the video this is the zero electric motorcycle series I don't even know what number I'm on but uh, this one is gonna be about the new BMS which I'm only using basically for monitoring purposes and not using it for balancing purposes and I'll talk to about I will talk about that a little bit here in this video but uh, I also want to show you a little bit about what I've got on the uh, programming side just to show you the app and what it does real quick and uh, kind of its state of what it does. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the battery management system, the new one. Let's unbox it and talk about it. And to give you a heads up, it is a passive uh, device, not a active balancing device. So BMS stands for battery management system. Some people call BMSs uh, that are balancers uh, BMSs and BMSs that are balancers and it gets really confusing but a battery management system really is defined as undercharge, overcharge, temperature protection, so forth and so on and what I added with the little circuit board uh, a while back, the little bitty one, is an active balancer. That's all it does. So the new BMS system monitors all the voltages, tells me uh, if I'm overcharging something, undercharging Discharge over discharging, I should say something, the cells are out of balance, it gives me all that data, packs it into a serial bus, and then I can access it from the outside. So that's really what I wanted it for, and that's what I'm using it for, and really I bought it to just save myself a lot of effort and time from engineering something from scratch. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started, and then we'll come back here and talk about some more stuff. So check out the unboxing. This, I've been waiting for in the mail. It finally came. And what is this, you ask? Well, I told you guys that I bought a different style BMS management system so I could monitor each cell in my battery pack. I told you that, and I ordered one, and I told you it was like 30 bucks, and this is what I got. I realized I ordered just a piece of the kit. That's why it was only 30 bucks. Silly me. So I got myself a really nice 100 amp contactor, which I'll probably use for charging, so that's fine. But yeah, I had to reorder this and wait another month, so this took two months to get. And here it is, it's finally here. So before we talk about the gear ratios and crap, let's just open this box, because this is part of the series. I actually have not opened this yet. I'm surprised it's still made it. There's stuff hanging out of the side. Hopefully the rest of it's in there. But basically, I want to monitor each cell in my battery so I don't kill an individual row of cells. And so, that's what this is. This will do the trick for me. I was going to make one of these from scratch and realize it would cost me a lot of money and time and effort. And so, uh, I just found this one finally, which apparently was semi-developed by some individuals on a form somewhere. And then made in China. Imagine that. So here is the... Uh, module. So why is this uh, important the way I got this? This module can be mounted on the front of the bike and I can monitor it. But the actual battery management system itself is here and it's attached in the battery. Now I plan on probably taking this out of this nice aluminum case and mounting it in my own case along with a cell phone as such. So I'm going to have GPS and speed and, and then I'll uh, also have uh, the battery management stuff. I was going to build these into one, but this is way faster and easier, and I think it's going to work pretty well. I just got to figure out how to mount this stuff. So, we also have ourselves a nice shunt. So, now I'm going to be able to measure the current. Right there, it's marked FL 2.05. It should have a, it doesn't have a measurement reading on it, but it's for this BMS. And basically I can measure the current in, current out, and get me an actual state of charge, which is really nice. So we got the battery interface cable. This is uh, the same thing I connected last battery build. So this goes to the, uh, the battery itself. 
And I'm just going to piggy tail these onto the ones I already put on there. Uh, these are temperature sensors, so I do have battery temperature sensors now, which is great because that's important. There's a buzzer and a light. Strangely enough, they go in the front of the box, so that's kind of weird because I don't know how helpful that is. I'd rather it be in the battery. Um, USB cable for programming. Another cable for uh, one of the outputs here, I believe. And then the actual unit itself. And that's it. No instructions. Nothing. That's all that came in the box. So the reason that I got this is because it will remotely connect the BMS system over to something I can mount on the handlebars. And now I can monitor it from afar. I can also do battery cutoff. So I can use my uh, solenoid that I bought, even though it's 100 amps, to do charging and discharging cutoff if I want. Um, that's important, even though the charger takes care of that in this case. But if it was over temperaturing, I could use this as a cutoff. And I can build all this into the battery slash onto the bike. Now I'm hoping that I can get this apart and uh, get it in the battery in that side, which I think I can. We'll have to see. Oh, there's two COM port connections on here. Weird. Okay, well there you go. It's unboxed. You can see what it is. It's installed right here and I'll show you that in a minute. Now I took a lot of video of me installing it on here and I was recording it with the uh, the live stream camera and then my power died and I'm not a hundred percent sure if I can recover that but if I can recover that footage then you'll get to see it in this video. However if not sorry that's what happens. So I took the case off which I put in the box. I took the case off and glued the thing on here so let's have a closer look. Alright so here it is in its form of how I've got it on here. Now, I was hoping that it would fit in here, and it does. I actually uh, screwed uh, three standoffs onto that board and put those back in there where it was originally mounted. Now, this thing says that the heat sink shouldn't be attached to anything else, so the heat sink must be live, but this is all plastic, so I'm fine with that. Now, if you did this on yours with this exact BMS, you should probably be careful because uh, the heat sink is right up against the plastic, and it does get fairly warm, so there's no any cooling here. This is kind of a bad idea, but I'm not using this balancer. I'm using that one, and that's an active balancer. It doesn't get nearly as hot because it doesn't have to dissipate any energy in order to charge, uh, or to balance, I should say. So the way I've got this, this little cable is supposed to go in there, and I actually just cut off the top of this, and what this goes to is the little box that you're supposed to use for your monitoring purposes. So if I plug it in here, it fires up. I can hit uh, start. It'll show me some data, show me some information. This thing will update here in a little while. But this is a really important screen. It basically shows me um, everything I need to know. It shows me the amps, shows me the volts, shows me the uh, temperatures. There's two temperature probes. Uh, it does have low temperature cutoff and high temperature, and you can actually set those parameters. It shows all the cells and their voltages. And then um, I could go into the menu, I guess, but it's not probably not too important. I think I just hold this button. There you go. So let's see here. How about that? So you can see all the different things that you can set in here. Okay. All kinds of fun stuff. You can set uh, all kinds of stuff. And then this, this unit has outputs and uh, inputs for the um, temperature probes and then outputs for the charging and discharging. And you can basically set up if you want the uh, charger to quit and all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm probably just going to monitor all that manually because I really don't want to do it quite like that plus I'm gonna have my own little controller and I'll be doing that probably externally we'll see so basically what I'm saying is is this um, little unit right here really is just for programming those different values and cutoffs and turning on the charger what's really cool or the balancer what's really cool is you can actually disable the balancer which is what I've done or you can only balance on discharge or only balance on charge so if for later I'm finding out I really need to balance better, then I could kick this guy on at a certain difference in voltage. So if one of these cells gets really, really out of whack, then I got an extra basically amp 
of uh, balance power in this guy, but it's not an active balancer, which defeats the purpose of buying this board right here. So I'm still happy with this board, and I'm only using this, like I said, for monitoring. So once I get the system up and running, I unplug this, okay? And then I will uh, have the serial data coming out somewhere else, and then I'll button this whole battery up, and it'll just be contained within its normal bounds. Now on the other side, over here, I did add the current probe, or I should say it's not a current probe, it's a shunt. So it's a DC shunt, so you're measuring a little millivolt voltage difference across these three little ribbons uh, of metal, and you can actually sense what the current is. So I will calibrate this a little better. I actually had to machine it down so that it fit in there, so I actually cut these off, so it may have affected calibration just a little, but it shouldn't have, because I didn't get into the actual shunt part of the whole thing. But yeah, the fuse is still in there, the shunt is in there, and uh, it barely fits. So I'm going to run the com, court, com port out of this box somehow. The center of the bike hits right here, so I really got to run it either out of the top or... Can I sneak it past? I could probably sneak it past right there and just bring it out. Put a little connector on it. So it's just a ground and a data line. And like I said in my uh, one video, I've just kind of hacked this board for now and it runs over to a beagle bone. So now, let me show you the interface that I made. Okay, here's the little interface. I'm going to plug it in and hope all of my stuff runs. I still need a lot of work to do on here, but if I plug it in, there's a little red indicator right there, and it should go green, and all the voltages should update. There it goes. So now the voltages are updating. Here you can actually see them. They update at the same rate as the uh, data signals coming through, so they're not super, super fast. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the charger. Now, the interesting thing is, is there's a data bit that comes over that it's actually, it actually knows as if it's charging or discharging. So what I've done is I put it in and an out, and that way I can determine the gauge and what it's doing. I was going to split the gauge in half and make negative charging and positive discharging, but I decided I'm just going to change the color of everything and indicate white as charging and then also if you look you'll see the text change and the kilowatts is the same way white is charging and there's still some flukes I'm playing with this is just sort of what it is at the moment so um, what you'll notice is when the voltages get up past 3.5 the background color will change I'm gonna change that to probably white and then these other numbers are going to start changing to yellow and changing to white and all kinds of crap is going to happen because the battery really is already pretty full. It says 92% of charge, but uh, the battery is actually pretty charged up. It's just been sitting running the BMS for the last month. I haven't even driven it because I really want to get this done and install it and get it working. So I'm going to plug the charger in so we can just watch what happens. Okay, the charger is in. It'll take a minute. Once it auto detects and kicks on, then you'll see the voltages change and everything here. So there's the current. Oh, I changed it to green instead of white. I still got to do the kilowatts apparently. So you can see the battery voltages changed to yellow, the background changed to orange, and the now the volt battery voltage changed to orange, and the numbers are changing to white. And what I decided to do is do everything by color. So the numbers are really small; they're going to be hard to read. But if I can just look down and see a color, then I know what's going on. And if you look really close, see the background? That's actually the data coming through. So it's there all the time, you just can't see it. I'll remove that eventually, but I kind of like it. It's kind of fun. So what I'll probably do is flash the ba or turn the background white and then leave all the numbers uh, green, yellow, and, and orange, and red as their indicating colors. But yeah, you can see it right there. It's charging at 22 amps, and it seems to be pretty accurate. I still need to do some checking and stuff. And uh, you can see the battery um, temperatures. This little voltage number is actually the difference between all of these numbers. You can see the state of charge turned to uh, 100, and the battery voltage is in the orange. Now the battery voltage does the same thing when it goes down, it changes colors. Same thing with the state of charge. The kilowatts is actually, the higher you go, the different colors change. And then I did get GPS running, as you can see. I actually have zero on the 
GPS right now. The, the thing that says none is actually a direction, but since it's in my garage, it's not getting any GPS. And yeah, I could talk about this all day because I spent almost a month programming this. And uh, the next thing I got to do is get the uh, BeagleBone pocket and then uh, get everything set up again on there. And uh, yeah, seems like it's actually doing what I want it to do. It's really freaking cool. So if I unplug it, yank it, see the amps drop, the kilowatts drop, the voltages all go back down, and uh, everything goes back to its normal color because it's sitting at a happy state right now. So nothing changes. Um, the, the speedometer gauge and the numbers and all these other numbers all change with the gauge. So when the gauge changes colors, the numbers also change colors. And I just, I based everything on color. So here, I'll plug it back in. That way I can glance down and if I see the background orange or if I see the background white or I was going to use red but I didn't want all the numbers to blend in. If I see anything change, see there it went yellow, the battery voltage and all the other batteries. Now the background went orange. Now it looks like I had a dead zone on green on the battery. <laughs> it went from yellow to green. It's supposed to go from yellow to orange. Anyway, the whole fact of the matter is, is this whole entire thing is color coded so that I can look down and go, oh shoot, something is yellow or orange or red or turquoise or green or whatever. And I can go, aha. So I'll do the same thing with the uh, temperatures. I'll make them change color based on their temperature. And uh, yeah, that's about all I got to talk about. That's the way it is for now. Um, I removed all the numbers on the uh, gauges and I just decided to blow up the number that I actually care about. Originally, I want to put the numbers in the middle, but the way that it's programmed, the actual gauge is always on the top layer, no matter what you do. And I haven't had time to figure out how to put it on the back layer. Anyway, it's pretty cool. It does work. So if I yank it, it'll all go back to happy green. And uh, yeah, thumbs up for that. Freaking sweet. That was a lot of work. But I actually learned a lot doing this, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So now I gotta program the actual guy that's gonna go in there. Now I gotta add a few more buttons for my throttle control when I eventually get to that point. For now, I'm gonna put it on the bike as it is, drive it around, see what the real range is, because I've got the uh, miles on here. I also have a trip mile, uh, which is the, the first number, and then the second number there is actually the running odometer. So this thing doesn't have an odometer never did so now it'll have an odometer via GPS and I'll basically always have that number live and I'll recall it from the um, from the actual phone save it to the core of the phone and then recall it when I relaunch the app and it'll pull back up that number and start adding to it so yeah I'm pretty happy with with what I've got so far and the colors I tested the colors I've been driving the uh, the van and I even taped this thing to the motorcycle my other motorcycle just to kind of see how it would look out in the daylight and uh, I think it's going to work pretty cool awesome alright well that's all I got to tell you for now there's tons of stuff to do and uh, I'm learning a lot about programming and how to recall data from saving the states when you crash the app and just all kinds of stuff and um, I'm really happy with this BMS system so far Granted, I'm not using the balancer. I did turn the balancer on, but what I'm probably going to do... Well, I didn't turn it on. I turned it on and I tested it, but then I turned it back off. What I'm probably going to do is set the, the balancer to be only used when the cells are out of a really far number, like, let's say, half a volt, and then that extra boost of uh, balancing power will kick on. Otherwise, I want it to stay off because it's not an active balancer, and I actually turned it on for a while, and it literally started draining the battery trying to balance the cells out, which doesn't do me any good. So, uh, I turned it off. Anyway, other than that, this is, this is turning out to be a really sweet project. So I'm going to be 3D printing a mount for the phone over there, getting that finished up, and slapping it on there. And then while I'm doing some testing, I'll figure out how to actually do the hardware and the software to use the throttle control to remap the throttle control to do different things like efficiency mode or all-out mode or a nice gradual ramp or even minimum speeds so let's say I didn't want to go past 15 or 20 mile an hour for 
someone that doesn't know how to ride it, I can put it in low mode and at a slower speed, which is actually what the bike originally had with the uh, toggle switches on it. Had a uh, low, low uh, acceleration, which was low speed, low torque, and uh, then you could flip it to high speed, high torque, and it was just actually changing the ramp of what your input is versus what it's actually sending to the motor controller. So that's what I'm probably going to be doing with the Beagle Bone. So that's uh, for down the road, but for now I want to get this thing strapped to it and do some real testing. So thanks for watching. God bless you guys. Read the Bible more. I'm super exhausted today, so I'm going to go take a shower, maybe edit a little of this video, probably hack away at some more editing on my uh, program, and go from there. So God bless you guys. Peace. Later. What's up, everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com here. Hi. So this is installment uh, who knows what, because I haven't uh, figured out where I'm at in my series, but I finally got the battery management stuff, and I already uh, d d took it all up out of the box just, uh, just in my last uh, couple of videos here. And so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to pop the case off slide this out of here and just look at the electronics real quick because I'm really curious if this is passive or not on the charge it, charger, active or passive. So uh, let's grab the drill if I can find it. We'll just zip those screws out. Just have a quick look. By the way, this is a uh, battery management system and a monitor system all in one. And that's the reason I bought it. Because I want to be able to monitor each one of the uh, items inside of my unit. Now this unit itself will not cut the battery. Uh, you have to put an external solenoid or something to cut the charge or discharge. Um, in my case I'm just going to monitor the discharge and then the charge I could hook up to this if it was overheating or something. Look at that, it just fell apart. Sweet. Let's also take uh, this part. So, in case you're wondering, this is a Chargery Power BMS 16 Pro. 16 cell, 1.2 amp balance. So I'm pretty sure it has a uh, active balancer in it, because it's the same uh, 1.5 balance as that. So this has a screen on it and everything. I probably should have checked if this thing worked before disassembling it, but whatever. You can uh, un like not use the battery balancing on this. You can disable it, which is pretty cool. Which is probably what I'll do. Oh, that went to one of the other parts. And the reason I disable it is if it had uh, not active balancing in it. So it's got a bunch of MOSFETs there mounted onto the board and an, and an internal heat sink, which is kind of weird. It's not even attached to the case. There's MOSFETs on this, MOSFETs on this. Um, hmm. Interesting. I really can't tell if it's active or passive. Usually if it's passive, it's got resistors built in there. But if it's active, it usually has some capacitors and inductors built in there. I don't really see either one. There is a current sense going on here. So that's kind of cool. So I'll, I'll have to dig into that a little bit in this video, but let's open the... Oh man. Need smaller screwdriver. But I will find out in this video more about what we got here once I get into it a little further. Let's pop this part. Pretty nice little aluminum case though. It's kind of cool. Even though I'll probably take it out of here because it's too big. Oh wow. 
Yeah, I can save a lot of space. Look how much empty space is in that thing. The biggest thing on here is this port. Look at that. So I can build that right into my own little housing a lot better. Put a different connector on there. Kind of curious. Oh, these are just little buttons mounted right on the board. Let's put this other uh, thing back in here. I didn't even power this thing on. I guess I should have done that before I tore it apart, huh? Oh well. Beautiful. So I can either build my own housing or do something similar with this. So that's pretty cool. So I think I'll put it back together and power it all up and just make sure it works. I think that's a wise choice. Hi, Riley. Okay. Oh, by the way, this board does look skinny enough that I should be able to get that inside of my battery. I believe I have really close to that amount of room. If nothing else, I can put an aluminum back like the other uh, battery management system had and mount this onto the actual plate. We'll see. This I do not know. Oh, I cut it this one last night. Oh, yeah. I saw that one. You showed it to me. Here, Daddy. Can you do it right now? Please. Yeah, sure. I'm fixing a Dexter's clock. No, it works. I was just borrowing it. For what? I was recording a video and needed a time clock so I could see if it messed it up or not. Um. Oh, this one. That one? Yes, please. Butterfly. Yes, please. All right, I got that back together. No one will ever know. Let's go ahead and take uh, this heat sink off and just have a quick look under here. I'm really curious to see what's really going on. Daddy, how many videos have you done? Too many. Over, a, well over a thousand. Wow. Including the 
No, this is my main channel. Not including the live stream, not including anyone else's, not including anything else. Just my main channel. Alright, here we go. Let's find out what we got under here. Oh, there's an ARM press processor in here. How about that? That's pretty slick. And we got a bunch of, uh, we got our heat, uh, heating uh, resistive element. And then we've also got a bunch of, uh, I don't know what those are, transistors. Looks like. So this might actually be active um, balancing. So I should probably ditch the other board completely and just use this because it's all built in and I can monitor it real easy and all kinds of things. Probably does the uh, state of current charge and everything. Look at that. I wonder if that's the same chip that I was going to try to put in my own unit. I'd have had to build this whole board myself and test it and program it. That had been a lot of work. Well, that's pretty cool. I think I'm going to look that chip up and see what it is. Alright, it looks like that's a uh, ARM core processor. It's a uh, M3. Cortex M3. It's a uh, maximum speed of 72 megahertz. And uh, yeah, full USB speed and CAN interface. So that's pretty slick stuff. Um, that's, that's nice. Nice looking little board. All right, so I'm going to guess, yeah, this thing does have uh, active because there are no passive resistive components unless they're passively, uh, quote-unquote, passively using these chips as their uh, discharge, which they could be. I, I really don't know. I can't tell. I'd have to really diagnose this circuit. But to be fair, this is really good quality. This thing looks really nice. I, uh, I'm pretty impressed, actually. They even got a little uh, insulator here that they can wedge wedge the board and they've got a thermal right on the heat sink. And then they and then obviously you got thermals coming in from the outside. So if you look here, we've got the uh, the batteries. I don't know what COM2 is. Then you've got your current sensor, you've got your USB. I don't know if I can program that or if there's things I can change with USB, I gotta figure that out. And you got your uh, charge controller and temperature. So two different temperature sensors. I don't know if it does low and high cutoff. I'm not sure. I guess we'll put this thing together and just power it up externally and just see if the thing comes on.
right, since I opened this thing in the last video, I'm gonna do this again here, but this is a Charger BMS 16T for 16 cell LiPo Life life uh, LTO battery, it doesn't matter um, what kind because it just balances the batteries and then you can program what kind of battery you'd like it to be as far as the uh, current in, current out, uh, voltage in, voltage out. You can't, this is not a uh, active component where you're feeding all the power through this. This is only connected to the batteries with these leads and you're just monitoring it and then you're physically turning off a connection like this coil contactor here to kill the battery when it's necessary to do so or you can just set an alarm so you can audibly or visibly visibly hear it so what came in the box this battery management box here really nice looking unit seems pretty good then you've got the uh, the, the head unit so to speak so this is also a really nice looking little unit it also has USB in your beeper and your LED. It's kind of weird that those are up here, but I guess you want to buy your indicator. And um, then you also got a shunt. In this one, I bought a shunt with it. All right. So I can tell the current and you can actually get the real state of charge this way by watching the voltage and the current. And I can know exactly how much went in and how much went out and do the real monitoring, which is great. You got the cord. It's just phone cord. Four pin, uh, what is that, an RJ45 plug. I believe and then uh, and then you got two uh, two temperature sensors here and then you got a couple other leads have to look and figure out what all these are for exactly um, this is for the battery management this goes to the shunt uh, the USB cable here for programming then you've got a light and a buzzer so uh, yeah we're gonna go from there and uh, see what happens. So that's what's all in the box. Came in a nice packed styrofoam uh, box. Now it's time to actually figure out how to make all this work, power it up, and see what it looks like. Why did you turn it back off? And turn nice. Look how fast she got that done. That was like well, 10 actually, minutes. It looks really nice. Really nice. Good job, Rara. Using crayons? Yeah. I love you Pencils too. Pencils take too long, but they do make it neat. And Sharpies, well, I don't feel like sh using Sharpies, so why not just use my crayons? Okay. <laughs> you keep some more of your cells yeah. not using Sharpies. <laughs> yeah. I did that. <laughs> 